Okay, now we're going to start working on the body a little bit. Get yourself a sheet of this type of plastic. This is 1.5 millimeters thick. Um, a sheet of uh, 2.4 meters by 1.2 meters will set you back about uh, 40 bucks across me for this piece. Um, it's quite flexible. You can cut it with scissors, but you've got to be careful it doesn't split in spots. Now, to get your length of your sheet, to work out your height and so on of the body, this is going to be the body height plus the dome plus the gap plus you know, for the legs. This from here, the width of the body is 485 millimeters from top to bottom. That's the width I worked out for my uh, off my scale measurements of uh, various things off the net. Okay, well now we know the measurement from here to here is 485 millimeters, and that's going to apply to pretty much everybody who's out there doing an R2 unit because that's the standard measurement that I've worked out. Um, but you need to work out the length. Now my dome is 400 millimeters, but I want an inside measurement. And this is 1.5 mil thick on each end, so that's three mil per side of the dome. So, um, and then there's another skin on top of this as well, being three mil as well. So we want a minus six mil off the overall dome measurement. So it ends up being 400 millimeters on the outside measurement. To do that, you just basically do 400 minus six millimeters is 394. And then you times that by pi, and pi is 3.1416. So it's basically pi times the diameter. 1237 millimeters, oh, 1238 if you want to round up. You cut this thing at 1238 millimeters for the inner skin, and that will wrap around a 400 millimeter dome. If you have a 450 millimeter dome, you do that by 3.1416, minus your thicknesses. Okay. Next up, we've got to cut two rings. This is 16 mil MDF. The diam diameter of this particular inner ring, because our thicknesses go on here twice, there's two skins that go around here, is uh, 394 millimetres. If you, can't, if you haven't got a compass to work out a 394 millimetre circle, if you're having trouble trying to work out how to actually draw that circle, get your piece of wood, but all you have to do is get a piece of wood like this. You nail the nail in this end, sorry, here, and you cut it off with pliers so it's a sharp end. And then you just, you measure down your measurement, in my case was down here somewhere, 396 millimetres, half of that 396, sorry, 394 was 197. So put another nail in there, which I've used, and you cut that off as well. Then you'll end up with two nails, like so. Put one nail in the centre, and the other nail you just scratch a circle around in the timber. Once you've done that, you'll be able to trace around with a pencil very easily. Is the, oh sorry, this disc is the bottom disc, and this disc is the top disc. It's exactly the same outside diameter, but you come in about 60, cent, uh, 60 millimetres, which is 6 centimetres in, and then, draw, and then scribe out another circle. And you have your top and your bottom. Next we're going to actually work out some, a bit of a subframe before we wrap the first skin around it. Now you cut these discs, you can use a router or any tool you like, but I use one of these, which is just a jigsaw. You want to have a fairly chunky blade on it so it cuts through easily. And if you have a decent jigsaw with a proper blade, it doesn't have too much movement, you won't get that problem that sometimes you end up with a cut that's on an angle. My cuts are all nice, square and straight. Just have to sand them up. The next thing you need to do is you need to cut three of these pieces here. Now this is 70 by 35 millimeter standard pine timber. You can get this from your local hardware. Literally is like four dollars for a 2.4 meter length. We need three pieces at 453 millimeters long. If you're using the same thickness stuff here, so basically it is 485, which is your overall height minus the two thicknesses of these, is the length of these. What we want to do is this. These are done by eye. It's not evenly spaced. So you want to have it flush with the edge here, like that. Make sure you sand all your burrs off and stuff as well. So it's flush with the edge of the timber, and then around here. Uh, 10 inches long I suppose, put the other one. Now these, these have to be close together for a reason, and then just by eye on the complete other side, the opposite side, put the other one, so it looks like that. The reason being is when you screw the first plastic skin on here, if you just had all the tension on one beam, it would split the plastic. So what you do is we're gonna screw, we're gonna put like two screws in here or three screws in here, we're gonna bend it round and put a lot of screws in here so all the tension's in the middle of the sheet rather than on the edge, and then we'll go around to the other side, over here, screw it along all the way back around again. Uh, obviously the other dome will be on top like this. So, that'll be up there like that. 
and that'll give you a basic subframe. Now, make sure you screw this and not nail and not glue just yet because depending on where all the middle components go, because we're basically guessing this as we go, so depending on where the middle components go will depend on whether we move these or not. But this will get you the skin on first so we can get the skin nice and strong, screwed all the way around the edge, safe and flat and beautiful. These inside pieces can be taken out later on if we have all screws around both edges anyway. Make sure you drill all your pilot holes first and just drill them slightly bigger than the screw that's going to go in. And then you want to countersink the burr side. So you drill it through from one side, which is nice and nice, and you go to the other side where it's sort of spread out and you, get it, you countersink it so the head, of the, the head of the screw here is flush with the timber. How you do that if you haven't got a countersink bit is you just put a slightly larger drill bit in your drill and then drill down a little bit to take the, uh, the depth of that head. And there you have it. Now don't stress too much about, uh, a bit deep on that one, don't stress about too much about where these timbers are going to be because at the end of the day you're probably going to have one of these in place. So what you do is you'll we'll start, say on this one, we'll put a screw here, a screw here, maybe two in the middle, and then we'll go around here and we'll fold it and screw it all the way around here all the way around the bottom, put a couple of middle up here, then we'll go around the whole thing, screwing it off to the side, screwing it off to the side. If you need to put any screws in here, we will, we probably won't, and then go all the way around to this side, and then we're back to the start, and then we screw that off. And once that's done, providing all this is all strong and glued and everything, you're happy with everything, we can take those two pieces out and leave just the one piece in for the join. Okay, when you finish, you'll end up with something like this. Screw it all the way around. Turns out I didn't actually need to screw to the other two bits of timber, I only needed to screw to all the way down the seam here, and the top and bottom. That's it. So around here, and around here, and up the seam. Which means once I've finished drilling and countersinking all these places and gluing it all, I can take those other two bits of timber out and the structure will be self-supporting. Don't worry if you've got a gap here, because we're going to fill that, and don't worry if you've got a bit of a bow there, because we're going to put screws every inch all the way down. And then we'll fill that and sand it all, just like we did with all, with all the screws across the top and bottom. It's the beginning of R2's body. Now that we have it in place, because these screws are sticking out still, we will do one screw at a time. So we'll start somewhere not right on the seam, so the seam's right here, we'll probably start here. And you take that screw out, we'll countersink that bit of plastic and then screw it back in until it's flat. We'll go around the whole lot and do that as well. Um, and then we know that it's all ready to go back together. And then what we can do is we unskin, we take the screws off again, unskin it, run glue around the edge for half of it. So we'll go from, we'll go from here, unskin it all the way around to there so we'll still leave it connected. We know all the screws are already self tapped ready to go. So we'll run some glue around there and then we'll screw that side back up again. And then we'll undo this side and go around that side, half a glue and bring it back up again. And of course, finish up with the seam and get it all perfect. Now we have the, uh, the skin, the first skin, countersunk and screwed and glued. You can see it's all glued with liquid nails, which in case you don't know, is this stuff. That whole, that three pack of tube cost me about eight bucks. Now I recommend, you see here I've actually countersunk the screws, I don't know if you can see that, but the screws have been countersunk so they don't stick out anymore. I recommend you buy one of these. It's called a countersink bit and it's worth about eight bucks. If you use a bigger drill bit, it'll probably go through the plastic and you'll end up with a stuffed up piece of skin. So you can see the countersink bit there. Now that we've done that, there was three supports here. I've taken the other two out. So now, inside, it's just the main support where the join is. Yeah, the join of the countersink bits. Don't be afraid to sand it, by the way. So there's your, that's the join. So I've got the join. It's the only bit of timber that, there's, that is that structure inside. So what that means is when you start cutting holes and everything, it's not going to fail. That 